Welcome to another week here at the Turin. We are working on the wiring for the first floor and as you can tell I also got a little bit of lighting done this week.
So before I can continue working on the electrical here in the kitchen, I actually need to take this door out. This is the door that goes out into the current, uh, currently covered porch. Um, <clears throat> so before I can before I can continue working on the electrical here in the kitchen, I have to take this door out. Um, this door currently um, is a door from the kitchen area to the covered balcony that we are going to change. We're going to only have an, um, it be accessible through the hallway. The main reason is because right there where this door is, is going to be where the sink is going to sit in our kitchen and therefore um, we can obviously have a door. What we are going to do is I'm going to just frame the bottom of it up again so we can actually have a actually have a window right here instead. So we're going to take out this, this door frame, frame it up and then I will continue the electrical right around it because there will be a light uh, there will be one more outlet on this other side of um, the sink over here So modern kitchens have a lot of different circuits that you need. Um, you will need a dedicated um, circuit just for the refer uh, refrigerator, 20 amp. Reason why that is is modern day fridges are just getting more advanced. There's more technology in it. Besides having an ice maker, um, cooling um, of the standard fridge, a freezer, and then um, if you look at a lot of the smart fridges, they have like big. TVs built in um, that are touchscreen where you really can control your entire house. So dedicated um, outlet just for the refrigerator. Then you have to have two circuits that are GFI protected um, that are just for the countertop areas and that is for all the appliances. Um, a lot of the kitchen appliances like standing mixers and coffee machines and stuff like that draw a lot of amperage so they want you to just have multiple um, circuits for the kitchen tabletop uh, or the, for the kitchen preparation area and then one um, other thing is you obviously need to have for your range for your cooktop um, you have to have a dedicated one um, and that's usually a bigger one so talk to your electrician obviously um, of the right size for your range it might vary uh, based on regulation, so I don't want to put anything out there. Um, also, one of the things that um, you have to have is a dedicated, at least in the US, a dedicated microwave um, circuit where nothing else hangs on. You can, um, I think the re uh, you have to do a 20 amp just because they draw so much wattage. 
Um, another circuit that you need, let me pull over here and I'll show you. Um, in our case is here, uh, the dishwasher. The dishwasher has to, has a has to have a dedicated one. Um, it only requires a 15 amp one because most, uh, most uh, dishwashers don't draw a lot of, amp uh, lot of wattage uh, amperage, but um, I upgraded because I am already running everywhere um, 12 gauge wire instead of 14 gauge wire. So all my receptacles get 14 gauge wire, uh, 12 gauge wire. Um, and then the other one that I, for example, don't do um, if you want a garbage disposal, it also has to have a dedicated um, circuit for it. Um, and But we are not doing a, a garbage disposal in our sink, so therefore I am omitting that circuit. One of the things I wanted to point out when I need to go around the corner, I tend not to actually just notch out the corner and just um, run your wire with a plate over it. I don't like that just because it, um, the risk of a dry waller um, using that spot and putting it in additionally, um, you could, why don't you just drill a hole from this side and from this side and then fish the, wall, uh, the, the wire through. It's a lot of work to get a wire around a 90 degree angle, especially from two holes that come perpendicular onto each other. So, especially in a such a tight corner. So what I like to do is I just like to go into the um, floor below us, always with the wire, and then just use the joist area there, make holes um, in the joist and come back up. So very simple, uses a little bit more wire, but I think it's worth it. So basically I come over, um, go down into, in that area where I need to, go down, come, I make a hole in the joist from this side, make a hole in the, in the joist or um, fire cover uh, or fire plate that you have on here, and then come back up and then continue my uh, circuit that way. Now that we finished the electrical receptacles, or at least run all the wires to it, I want to do some testing for lighting. Um, we have a few of these boxes, uh, six inch ones. I am going to mount a few, um, put 
some bulbs in it so that we can actually see kind of what area it illuminates in the kitchen, in the pantry, so that I know um, and so that we can make a decision of where we want to have them placed, where it illuminates the entire area that we want, especially in the kitchen and in the pantry, but we want to have a lot of light because you're working, you're using knives and kitchen um, appliances and um, those can be dangerous if you don't have a lot of light. So we want to obviously make them dimmable so the light doesn't always have to be on at full, but we will put these um, six, six inch boxes into it so that we can adjust based on what we want. One fair warning, what I'm gonna do is not up to code right now, I'm just doing a test. Um, so if you don't know how to do electrical and you wanna do some tests yourself, um, obviously that's your own risk. I am, all I'm doing is hooking up a 14 gauge wire to the box. I am going to actually put Yes, and this is Romex, so it's not supposed to be used. It's an extension cord, but I'm just using, using it as a temporary just so that I have a long enough wire to hang down. I will attach a, a outlet to it, or not an outlet, I'm attaching a plug to it so that I can plug it into the extension cord. And so that, that way I can test a light without actually wiring the entire breaker box and everything up. What kind of light bulbs do you guys like? I t tend to use the daylight light bulbs that I have in here right now. Obviously this is a um, high wattage um, LED that is white daylight in areas like the kitchen. Um, this is the pantry of course, um, pantry, kitchen, hallway. I tend to use the white ones, so the daylight uh, bulbs in those areas because I like to have it more natural and also more visible in those areas. I like to flood those areas with light because it gives you um, for safety purposes and also just those areas are areas that you use a lot. So therefore I like to have a lot of light in them. Um, and then I tend to use living spaces like bedrooms and um, living room, for example, I tend to use the soft white 
um, slight, slightly yellowish. Um, it's a little bit more close to older bulbs. They are not as yellow as older bulbs, but um, they definitely have a little bit more of a homey feel with that a, li a little bit of orangish uh, tint, uh, yellow tint in it. So I like to do that. Um, so leave me guys a comment what you guys think were, um, which bulbs you guys prefer um, nowadays, obviously with all these fancy bulbs, um, LED bulbs that you can even change your colors. Um, obviously there's lots of choices, um, but when it comes to standard bulbs, what kind of colors and what areas do you, do you guys like, uh, like? So leave us a comment and let us know. Thanks. Well, I think this is it for this week since we, <clears throat> well, now that we have light everywhere, um, or, well, now that we have light here in the pantry and I actually tried out um, the six inch cans and I actually like them. They give us um, a little bit more options of what kind of size of bulbs we want to use. Um, and since we finished that, I and it's kind of late, I need to get some dinner. And it is Saturday, so I want to wish everybody a happy new year. And I will see you next time I turn on the camera. Bye.